Glebe Island Bridge, already Sydney's newest landmark, and when completed in 1996, will be one of the largest concrete cable-stayed road bridges in the world. The impressive structure has been designed as the city's key east-west link to Victoria Road and the M4 at Concord. However, its origin lies in our colonial past, with Glebe Island originally 13 hectares of thick tea tree scrub. The first Glebe Island bridge was built in 1857 to link Sydney with its rapidly expanding northwestern suburbs. By 1903, Glebe Island itself began to be redeveloped and the original crossing was replaced with the existing four-lane steel structure to provide access to shipping and traffic. Not many years passed before Father Time again caught up with the old bridge. Daily it became choked with up to 77,000 cars and regular bottlenecks when opened for shipping. Recognising the problem, the Roads and Traffic Authority in 1985 began to work closely with the local community to find a solution. A solution that would free up traffic and provide an environmentally friendly asset for Sydney for generations to come. After careful environmental and cost consideration, the choice was made to construct an eye-catching cable-stayed bridge with a main span of 345 metres and featuring two 120-metre-high support towers. The state and federal governments agreed to share the $82 million funding of the venture. Construction began in 1989 with the building of the foundations for the main towers. 112 steel pile casings, each one and a half metres in diameter, were driven into solid sandstone rock up to 35 metres below sea level. The material inside the casings was excavated, steel reinforcement set in place, then filled with concrete. The two main towers are being constructed on massive pile caps, 21 metres long and 5 metres deep. Each cap contains more than 5,500 cubic metres of concrete, which serves to transfer the load from the towers to the piles below. The towers, which consist of two hollow reinforced concrete legs, sit on a solid base and are being constructed using a jump form system. The system enables the structure to rise in cycles of four meters, each cycle taking four days to complete. Significant progress is also being made elsewhere on the bridge. The approach spans are being constructed on false work trusses, supported by temporary towers as well as the permanent piers. The trusses form a kind of bridge themselves, requiring little support from the ground and minimising interference to existing traffic. With the trusses in place, the first half of the road is constructed. After curing of the concrete, the trusses are lowered and slid across for the construction of the other side. The cable stay deck is constructed by free cantilevering, a technique by which the load on the tower is balanced by equal lengths of deck on either side. Each 10.3 metre section, supported by stay cables, is built alternatively on either side of the tower. Over land, the deck is constructed off a false work frame. Over water, a form traveller is used, which consists of a steel truss that locks on to the previous deck segment and is supported by the leading pair of stay cables. The stay cables consist of high tensile steel strands which are anchored to the towers and support the bridge deck as well as the traffic load. Placed end to end, the cable strand would stretch 810 kilometres, the same distance as Sydney to Burke. Despite the complexity of the construction effort, community involvement has remained an ongoing feature of the project. Hundreds of people weekly visit the display centre and viewing platform, with regular meetings held to discuss issues that affect local residents and road users. 
Architects and artists are working on plans to make the surrounding areas more attractive for pedestrians and cyclists and to incorporate aspects of local history into the landscaping and finishing touches. The new Glebe Island Bridge is also an important link between the two main venues selected for the year 2000 Olympics. When completed, the Glebe Island Bridge will join the Sydney Harbour and Gladesville Bridges as the third significant world-class harbour crossing, all built exactly 32 years apart. High, light and delicate in appearance, the landmark Glebe Island Bridge will be the biggest of its type in Australia and a vital and welcome addition to Sydney's road network.